Hi everyone, so this is like my first time kind of doing one of these videos. Uh, essentially, I was watching my friend on stream yesterday and he was um, he was uh, struggling a lot with like his brig and his mercy and he wanted some advice and some help. Um, he normally plays like Bap and Arna, so kind of like, you know, your main healers, the ones that do the most healing kind of thing. But he ended up on this kind of um, off healer, i.e. the ones that don't do as much healing. And he wants to kind of some advice on like Brig and Mercy especially because they're the two that I'm going through. Now I'm just going to be fully honest. I'm not a great Brig player, but I can always give like general support advice. And uh, obviously Mercy, I pretty much specialize in Mercy at this point. Uh, so I'm going to go through the replay now. Uh, this was a kind of high um, diamond low masters. I'm on my old account just to do this because uh, I'm recording Ready it through my old account because it's easier Ready to do so. Battle. Uh, I didn't really know another way that I could record this, so I was very much like, I'm just going to live stream it to my old Twitch account. Um, and then I can just kind of do it through that. So I'm just going to fast forward a sec Ready so I can get onto him. So we're watching it here. Um, first of all, I love the choice in Brigskin. I love this Brigskin. I think it's really pretty. Um, so I asked him here, because if you have a look at the comps that we have just before we start, I asked him, I said, what what's your main role as Brig here? Your main role as Brig for this team is essentially to stay with your honor or like and kind of just peel for your widow and your honor. Because if they have anyone that will die for them, for instance, here we do actually have a somber on this team, right? The somber is going to be coming out, going to be diving people. Your soldier pretty much has a little bit of self sustain. He has a heal pad and he also has the ability to run away. And he also does quite a lot of damage, just up close, far away in general. Soldiers are a really good pick anyways in general. You have dive tanks, so really your honor should be kind of focusing on the healing on them. And really as Brig here, you should try and just be kind of using it to protect your honor and your widow from that somber. So I'm gonna start it up now. And I'm just gonna just kind of be talking through kind of what things I really like, what things I don't really like while we go through this. So as you can see, it's just kind of sat at the back right now. I kind of like this. Uh, the the Widow gets the Ash, which is really good. You don't really need to be packing your tanks here. They're really, really healthy, and your Honor has really good sight lines on, on him. Um, so it's fine. You don't really have to do anything there. I like how, you, obviously, you're the only one that's pushing cart here, so you can't really do anything. I personally wouldn't have bashed here. I would have personally... How do I get into the other mode? Hold on. Um, where's the one that I can, like, move about? <laughs> Hold on, sorry. I'm a bit, like newbie to this there we go i would have personally kind of left the payload at this point because you don't really need anyone on the payload all the time and you can see that your honor's getting attacked i mean she does obviously have like the tanks to peel for her and everything and also your soldiers here as well i think it's best because you're kind of like frontlining here i would have peeled back and maybe kind of stayed with the honor then again i'm not a massive brig player so don't kind of you know quote me on that or anything um but yeah i would have liked to sorry i'll put that away um uh, i would have liked to maybe you come with your honor here um because if we watch this fight kind of play out your honor actually dies because obviously you've got all this lot that we're spraying here from here whereas if you were kind of in here maybe to help pack her or maybe help shield her across or something into the safety and then kind of your team would have just dived onto whoever went diving her i.e the hog that did end up dying in the end Whereas we're here, okay, you're pushing the car, awesome. But you're kind of like stranded, you know? Um, so I just would have done that differently. Let me um, carry on. Can I go back onto you? Hold on. How do I go back onto you? There we go. Because um, obviously you, you get the idea now you come into this thing. Obviously it's just about packing everyone up here. Make sure everyone's healthy. You obviously do have the soldier heal pad down now, which is really good. Now, um, here, I did actually tell you this on stream, was um, to not go and pack the Widow, because I thought the Arna was going to go and pack. Because so, obviously Arna's going to be back from spawn. I like that pack on the Winston, and now you need to kind of follow through. This is the same thing again. So, you know when I said, I said at the beginning, your main job is to protect... Sorry, this was really stupid. Um, your main job was to protect these two. Right? Right now you're frontlining. 
um and really kind of okay the sombra isn't because the sombra's over here obviously the sombra isn't hacking them but still like you could have maybe kind of turned around because for that entire time you were facing forward going forward with your tanks really you should be trying to look in around and your the main two you're protecting are here right you need to kind of turn around and as they're coming through maybe pack them because that wasn't a headshot and i don't know how long it did take to get them down obviously it wasn't great because your tanks also didn't help rotate them whatsoever um obviously you can't really do it without the widow because the widow kind of plays by herself but definitely with the honor you could have maybe helped with packing her maybe helped shield her a little bit but honestly it's it's happened it's fine and we'll just kind of continue now um I see you rotate around, and then this was just really unlucky with that hog that took that health pack. You can't really do anything there. Um, so yeah, so we'll just wait for this team fight just to kind of play out. I think everyone kind of just backs off here, from what I remember. So yeah, it's kind of just like, because I always think whatever support you play, think about what your role is at the start. Think what what's the main thing that I'm going to be doing as a support in this game. In this one it is to help your um help your dps basically i'm uh, sorry i help your widow and your honor um so i like the pack on i like the packs here unfortunately she gets dmh can't really do anything there kind of an unnecessary pack on the hog i understand why you did it because he was on fire but he was using his breather and going into a place of cover and was backing off I like that bash because obviously if the hog didn't secure the kill, it's a great way to kind of stun and get an extra little whip shot uh, on the just in case, which I think is really good. Um, I like that boop away as well. That was a really good hook by your hog as well. I remember that happening. And I really like this rally um, because obviously they're going for the whole hog. They brought out the fob. Your hog was also getting really weak because they were using their whole hog. They just come up with a whole load of ults and they're all kind of being countered by your rally, which I think is a really good idea. Once again, I like this stun as well on the, the Sombra. And obviously the Hog secures the kill. And it, overall, that, that kind of like last fight, like once you kind of did the rally, it worked out really well. I like that boop on the Ash as well. That was really good. So yeah, you're doing kind of the right thing here. Just kind of staying on the cart. I wouldn't have given two packs to the Fever there. I would have just given the one. The reason for the one is that your honor's there and um, her ultimate, I think, I don't know if she had it at that point. Um, but just a general thing, like, Nano, I think, is a lot more valuable in higher lobbies than um, Rally is. I like that boop away to try and like protect your and I really like that shielding for your diva as well. You can't really do anything about the Arna there, because your Arna should be playing a little bit more cover. But she didn't really. A bit of an unnecessary pack, I think. But it's the same thing, you're kind of front line. Like I, I understand that you want to use the cover and everything, but you are kind of going to the front line sometimes. Can't really do anything here, unfortunately. Yeah. I can't really do anything there because um, obviously everyone got EMP'd. That's kind of like their big kind of play gaming changing all. Once you kind of use an EMP, it's very much a one team fight unless they mess it up. And here's where we switch to Mercy. So obviously just a quick FYI, I am not really a Brig player. It's just how I would have played Brig there. So with this team comp, your main uh, damage piece target is your soldier, which is what you understand. You need to kind of look around a little bit more because I noticed already that you're playing very central, very static forward. Uh, I understand that you wanted your honor to kill the hog and she just didn't, which I fully understand. You get halted in, but that's fine. I would have gone over to that left side. Um, if you see it here, you know where your soldier stood? I would have flipped into that left room. Just purely because you don't have the entire kind of beam coming across, so it doesn't make it that obvious where your soldier is. And also it provides you a lot more cover being in that room. Because the only way they can get to you is if they kind of come behind in that room. But even then, you should be able to hear the footsteps in time. Um, so that's all right. Uh, I really like this damage boost priority here. You kind of got it now where it's like using that cover room. I would have topped up my armor a little bit here, but I really like the damage boost. Yeah. Uh, that res is, is a really, really good res because everyone's kind of pushed off and distracted. Nice kind of push backwards. I like how you look out for your widow here. 
because obviously she is critical. Your soul just fine, so I think it's a great kind of way to kind of just go back to your widow. And um, I really like as well how you're staying with your soldier here because widow has a one-shot ability. If the people didn't know, and there's absolutely no point in pocketing a widow unless it, there's very specific reasons why you would. Here, right? You, I, I can see that you want to go with the soul. Oh, hold on, that's not how you do it. Uh, I can see that you want to go with the soldier, right? But also you're tossing it up between you have all these lot, which are kind of out, you know, out here. This is how this team fight should be playing out, right? You should come into this room with the soldier. There is so much lovely cover plus a giant mega health pack that you can use in this room, right? And also it might help pull away some attention, right? Plus your soldier can get a really good pick if he's damage boosted here. For instance, you've got um who is this here? This is the Ash. The Ash is cut, like a very out of position. Obviously, she has the Mercy here. But the Ash is playing like a front line at this point. Obviously, I know she's just used her Bob and everything. But in reality, you could... Your job here, basically, is to pocket, right? Because you've got your Arna main. Widow is fine. She's in a very safe spot at the moment. So your main focus is to basically GA into this room using like a slingshot. Get yourself into a nice cover. Play these walls... Um, play this health pack even play down here if you need to uh, just honestly in anywhere like any piece of cover kind of thing because you were kind of tossing i'll go back um hold on i know it goes by like 20 seconds <laughs> i don't really know any way that i can like make it fast forward when it's on console unfortunately so yeah so you can see you're healing your diva up i understand that right once he kind of goes to go in here which is now that is when you should have rotated in with him right because your honor is here main to heal your tanks and they are completely fine the only other option you could have done if you didn't want to follow your soldier is that you should have gone all in with rotating around the back of this wall to go and help your hog because right here you're stood here doing nothing honestly and beam up time is really important with Mercy. Like you get the most effectiveness if you're, you, if you're like have a beam at least on someone, whether it's a healing beam or a damage boosting beam. It will be doing more than you just kind of stood around here doing nothing. You should have instead gone round the back if you wanted to help your tank size. You would have gone round the back and helped these lot. Personally, in my opinion, I would have gone with the soldier. But here, you're not using any of the two open options. You kind of just stood in the middle of the open here you kind of get it at this point where it's like well unfortunately the hogs died at this point uh, and your honor was a little bit late on the nade as well um but i would have gone fully in with the soldier there um but yeah because you get it then you get it at the what well, unfortunately you, you kind of click on once it's happened and I mean, most of your team's dead at this point. Like, you're, you're two down. So, I think you, d you do manage to get out, yeah. But it was just once again, it was like an unnecessary risk. But other than that, it's all right. I'll go back onto your POV now. Hold on. Uh, this one. Is it? No, this one. There we go. <laughs> I don't think healing your honor would have really done anything there. But I like your little back off with the Widow here. It's fine if your Diva dies because she just comes back with a mech anyways. I like your rotation out there to get away from the, the danger and everything. And I like how you're playing slightly away from your Widow. And I like how you leave your Widow here to go with your Soldier. Once again, better damage boosting target. Your Widow's not in any kind of danger or anything. It's a really good nano to save your Hog there to be fair. Um, but with, I've noticed um, you're very kind of tunnel visioned. I'm just going to carry on letting it play. You're very tunnel visioned in the fact that um, you kind of just look straight forward. There's not a lot of looking about, seeing where the rest of your team are. With Mercy, she has so much great mobility. And I always say to anyone, chuck Mercy on 100, 100 cents. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter about anything else. Just chuck Mercy on 100, 100 cents. Because you're not going to use the pistol that often, meaning you don't need to aim pretty much at any time with Mercy. Kind of just fully go in with the facts of chuck it on 100, 100 cents. Whack, you know, like, 
move about all over the place like like this like literally just be looking all over the place checking down here making sure that these two are okay going back up here checking that your tanks were okay i really liked i'm gonna say a really good thing here i really liked your damage boost on the hog hook even though he like he was nanoed and he'd, well, he'd secure a kill anyways i think it was still like a re it's a really good habit just to get into the use of damage boosting roadhog hooks um but no definitely this this is like something in general that i'd say for any kind of mercy player stick your sense on 100 100 whack about like this you know be looking about all over the place you'll find with me i play like i i, I shake a lot with my view like i shake like literally like this quite a lot or i'm doing like massive movements looking around like this because obviously they still have a sombra their sombra could easily just hack what well, your honor or your widow at any point so there is that um let me go back on to i need to figure out how to do this quickly in all honesty anyways right so i really like this damage boost here you should have then gone and try and found your soldier um i well this was a really good reaction actually to go and peel for your uh widow i like how you go into the indoor a bit once you get hacked Great use of cover. Great heal for your widow there. That was really good. And then you go in damage, which I 100% agree with. What I would have done here is I would have gone full in on damage boost in this visor. All right. Um, because okay, the uh, who's it? This is the Ash. <laughs> Sorry, it's just it's all like dismorphed. I was like, who is this? <laughs> um, I would have gone full in here of damage boosting the soldier. Right. I would have fully just. What I would have done is as soon as I knew the soldier was rotating round, I would have rotated round with him and used kind of this cover here. You don't want to kind of GA all the way across because the Sombra's here, right? And obviously all of the team is here. But what you can do, even if you kind of backed off with your armor and backed all the way around here, because this is a great kind of wall to hold if you want to kind of help this visor. And also if you did want to heal the hog, even though he has a lot of support here with him, really really good place to pocket him because i think your beam will dis yeah your beam has disconnected it's gone to the hog instead sorry <coughs> um but yeah so i'll carry on um on your pov yeah because you kind of like just ju you kind of just walk forward into the tanks here um but what you, what would have been the best bet was to go into this room because if you were in this room you would have been with your hog and your honor here and even though your widow and your soldier are dead it might have been turnable with the hog i don't know um i don't really know what else uh who else was there i mean your diva's still there i don't know where about your diva was right this because we had a bit of an argument about this when we were watching it um about who you need to pocket right i personally prefer pocketing ash over soldier why is that i'm just gonna go through it before this plays out because i know what's gonna come ahead next um why do you pocket soldier over ash ash has a dynamite right that damage boosted damage boosted dynamite just so much damage people don't realize how much damage um like damage boosted dynamite does it does so much Personally, in my opinion, I like to pocket ashes and I would highly recommend pocketing ashes over anything else unless if it's a far or an echo, right? Those are my only two exceptions with not pocketing ash. Because and also Ash really struggles without a pocket. If Mo if Ash doesn't have a pocket, then she's pretty much useless because her damage drop off is is really bad with the nerfs that came through like last year that haven't been reverted or anything. Um and all she has to escape is a singular coach gun. Which pushes her back slightly, and that's about it, right? Soldier, right? Soldier has damage boosted. Um, sorry, soldier has his helix rockets. He has a heal pad, and he has the ability to run away, right? Soldier, in my opinion, can stand alone a lot more than an ash. And I'm gonna tell you why this becomes very applicable along with other stuff in a second, right? So you're kind of stood here with the blue beam on the soldier, right? Both of your DPS go here, even though. Your Ash is going low ground and your Soldier is going high ground. And I'm going to talk about this. This is what your Ash will be wanting to do. Your Ash will be wanting to come down here. She'll want a damage boosted Dynamite to get all this slot because she can get behind the shield from down here. 
The soldier, okay, soldier has a health pack up here, or he can run away, at least a further distance away, while the Sombra is hacking him, or she can, he can easily just kind of distract the Sombra that might hack him if the Sombra comes up here, right? He also has a heal pad, which he can, if he has good enough reaction times, he should be able to place it down before this, before the Sombra starts shooting. Or he can back off to this mega here, right? Soldier has a lot of, like, sustainability here. And he has a lot of sustainability on his home, right? Ash is taking the low ground route. Ash wants to go in dynamite, like I said before. But Ash, she only has this small health pack. But from looking at where the Sombra is and where the Sombra might want to play, she'll come down here. She's not going to come out from this from this door because Diva's shooting here. If Diva shoots here, that Sombra's going to get like decloaked instantly so she, if sombra wants to come and attack she'll come through here and she'll hack her here right if uh if yash gets hacked here and left alone then she's just gonna die like instantly so i'm just gonna watch this and play like watch this whole thing and then i'll commentate on what happened afterwards um so let me just so you go with the soldier i understand and she dies. I understand why you'd think to go with a soldier. Soldier's going high ground. Soldier's going to do the most damage. But at the same time, you have to think about conserving your team. Sure, damage boosting is great. And I always talk about how much damage boosting you should be doing. But really, in reality, also conserving your team and make sure your team is alive is also a huge matter. So here, I would have gone down to the bottom. I would have helped with a damage boosted dynamite and also it would have helped with the Sombra in hindsight. Obviously, you didn't know the Sombra was there. But thinking about where the Sombra would be playing, thinking proactively and thinking, where is that Sombra going to come from? Is she realistically going to come from the high ground to the soldier? Or is she going to go for the more vulnerable person of the Ash? Now, I don't like what you did here because you're, you kind of, you should have gone back up to the soldier because here you're not going to kill the Sombra, right? You can see that the um, the Moira's healing her, right? You're not going to do anything with this pistol here. You're not going to get a kill. The only reason why I, I say to get out of the Glock is to either protect yourself for a few seconds if you could find an escape route or if you're going to get yourself a kill. Uh, that's usually if people are like really weak or if you feel really confident with your aim, you can secure a load of headshots or something. That's the only reason why I'd say pull out, pull out the Glock, right? Here you just kind of pull it out. Kind of just start shooting her. I, you do get quite a few shots on her. I respect that, right? As this is going on. Um, it's this one, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was keep a pull up the menus, have a look. While this is going on, the Ash is now rotating and has pressured your soldier out and he's now on fire. In reality, you should have essentially left this ash. This this ash is gone. This ash is done for. You ain't gonna get a res on it. You ain't, you know, you're not gonna be able to do anything because there's just so much danger there, right? I would have just fully, fully committed with this blue beam on the soldier if you wanted to fully commit with it. And go on this high ground. Because you still would have had a chance of maybe picking off the ash, maybe picking off the mercy. Just something on this high ground here. It wouldn't have been the Arissa or the Diva, probably. But I think definitely if this Ash went to challenge the soldier like she did, that would have been the play. So if you want to pocket someone like that, then you have to go full out on it, not do it, all oh, my Ash has died. We'll see if we can do something about that because, yeah, <laughs> you, you, can, you kind of see what happened. Um, let me just put the, put you back on. And you do go back to pocketing him now. Here, you need to kind of play a little bit further away from him. And he, you, you should have looked. This is the thing, what I mean about your sense. Your sense is quite slow from what I see. I feel as though you need to up it. And definitely, because you kind of stayed staring in your hog a long time. And you, it's kind of like you just totally forget about the soldier. Like, here, because you, what you should have done is you should have kind of quickly gone to the hog and then licked like literally done a full 180 and stuck that healing beam on your soldier because i don't know whether he would have been able to get out because he did get uh, halted and stuff but it would have at least given him a shot of getting out and it's no harm in doing because right now you're stood here with a full like a 
a damage boosted beam and a healing beam on a hog that can't do anything. Right. Obviously, you help him get out. I would have here turned around and had a look to see because I don't know whether anyone's coming back. Yeah, uh, there's nobody on high ground. But here, I would have definitely kind of turned my back and maybe kind of just looked to see if there's anyone to escape with. Because obviously, if every if everyone just decides, for whatever reason, let's rush down this hog, you're also kind of stood here stranded. If you give yourself that opportunity of looking around already and seeing where your team is positioned, it gives you a chance to at least know an escape route. So if things go, turn really south for this hog and you can't save him, good escape route. It's just kind of a really good thing to get into the habit of is just looking around as mercy. You kind of missed out on the damage boost. And here you were healing and damage boosting a full health hog that was using his breather. Instead, I should have would have just gone straight to go and find my DPS because the tank everyone's coming back from the team fight, right? Here is now when you want to kind of go to your DPS. Because once again, Mercy is a pocket. Her, she pockets her DPS. It's very rare that you'll have a Mercy that's with a tank, basically. So you I would have because everyone's coming back, you know everyone's coming back. I would then try to find your DPS. This being your Ash that's currently being dove. And I understand your understanding with this res, but you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> like, I, I I understand that you want to res, but you with seven seconds on the clock, I would have here gone straight, just flown straight to your honor. If you could have. Sure, you might not have survived. Because even like, because the thing is, you've got to try and think about the bigger picture. How are you going to survive more? Because you saw that the Ash just killed the other ash and obviously they can see you that's pocketing him here right so it's either you slingshot yourself into this room and hope that your tanks cap and they kind of focus you and you kind of go round the back if you can or because you were stood here you go over here and you still have another dps here that you can damage boost and get back into the fight with so here it was just kind of a bit of decision making gone wrong. I understand what you went for, but you have to remember that. <laughs> I love this so much. This is so I love this replay mode. Um, yeah. I don't. Sorry, I don't know why I'm hanging about on this now. You understand that. Um. And I think. I, must go I think you, you lose that there, don't you? Yeah. So I'll fast forward now to your... It's messed up all the colours, which is really... Okay. So we're on attack now. Um, You see with the comp here, you have a bat now for this double shield. I'll always run a bat with double shield. I'm just going to just point that in there. Always run a bat with double shield. Um, here, obviously, you have a Widow and a Soldier again. Main pocket target, Soldier this time. Why? Even though Widow is a lot, like... Because of how I mentioned before, how, like, Ash has a lot less survivability than a Soldier. Widow has a lot less. However, Widow has a one-shot ability. And they're playing for them one-shot abilities. So you don't need to damage boost them. You only really need to kind of peel for them. Once again, they have the Sombra, so you have to kind of keep checking out, make sure that you're kind of peeling for... The widow whenever you can and whenever it's safe to do so but once again main damage boost target is the soldier which is what you're doing right now which are, i like this cover but i would have played a little bit further back maybe played more towards the edge on this right side here because you can hear people coming underneath a lot better and you can call it out to your team your widow spamming i need healing here uh that i just heard i don't know where she is ah she's behind it so here if you ever hear someone saying i need healing and spamming it like that, especially if you look and it says it's on like crit or something like that, especially if it's like a widow or something, you expect her to be chased down by like a sombra or something. So I would, because you're kind of, once again, you're playing very tunnel vision, just looking forward, looking at these three, and you're kind of just completely ignoring these two here. So what you need to do is you need to kind of like look around and uh, just once again, just check for these two. Be kind of very... What I like to play with Mercy is I like to have as much information as possible when I play Mercy. I like to know what's going on. I'm very nosy. 
and I think that's what helps with my mercy is I'm very nosy and I like to know what's going on all the time so I like to see where people are I like to see where people are positioned and what I can do to help kind of thing I like to see who's playing main and who flanking who might be flanking from different places and stuff so here I would have definitely kind of turned around and helped your widow here which I, th I think you do but then did you just see your bap? I don't know. Or oh, whoever it was. I think that might have healed himself or something. Someone was crit, basically. Very, like, very next to you. Obviously, your Sigma dropped. Can't really do anything about that, Widow, because it was two headshots or, like, three headshots or whatever. You weren't going to be able to heal her in time. As Mercy, I would have kind of GA'd over to this right side. I like playing on this little bit of right side. Um, Once again, it's just kind of a personal opinion. I like how you notice, and I like I really like that. I like how you go to like go straight away to go and pocket the soldier uh, after helping with the with the Arissa. I really like that pill for the Arissa going straight for the soldier, and you saw the soldier was going back straight away, so you did go back. I really like that. What do you do here? Yeah, right move. Because here, kind of, um, your bap should have backed up a little bit quicker. Um, but obviously, very, very nice. I like that. That, that was some really, really good position in there. Sadly, you can't really. Are you, I think are you winning this one? Yeah, you are. I was just I don't think you can help your bat, but you can heal him up now. I like how you use that inside as well. I really, I love your use of cover. I think your use of cover is really good, and you know how to kind of position yourself around that. Once again, kind of just play play away from the target. You can kind of just uh, jiggle peek this wall here. Yeah, that's yeah. I like this. So here, you you really understand that it's your BAP's job to um, heal the um, widow and the Orissa that are main, because obviously they're being focused here. You you I love the idea that the fact that you understand that the BAP should be healing these two. And then so you decide to go and help and heal this um, Sigma. I really like that decision making there. Because that was just... that, that, that was, I, I'm really, really impressed with that. Because obviously it's, it's great to know who, like, if the bat can reach someone, if the bat can't reach someone. So I really like that decision making there. And I like how you're staying with your soldier here. This is a really good option. And I love this valve. That, that was a beautiful, like, perfect time valve. I would have maybe kind of just because with um, Mercy you get these extended beams before going for the res I would have maybe tried to extend my beam just for a second onto your widow just to kind of top her up a little bit sure she's backing off but still it gives her that little extra bit of HP on the just in case and I really like your res here it's very well protected by your team your team are doing really well to kind of protect you for this res I really like that Obviously, the, the Widow gets kicked off by the Sombra. Here, um, once again, it's kind of just, you're, you're very focused and very just looking at the same spot. You should really kind of be looking around once again. Because here, you didn't fully see where the visor was going to be. Uh, I think you tried to go on the res, but you didn't have it. I like you kind of use the cover here. I like how you're staying with your Orissa. And then you kind of, you, you stay. I love that you stay. You don't walk out into the open you stay where you are until you can see a, a good enough thing i would have maybe gone in and tried to heal my sigma a little bit closer because he was the one that was contesting cart your soldier was very healthy but your sigma was quite weak and i would have gone to go and heal the sigma a little bit eat, um, sooner i don't know whether that team fight would have been changeable since they did just bring out the bongo and they used a lot of ults in that fight so don't know whether that would have been winnable or not but definitely I would have gone to help the Sigma out more. Just because he's on crit. If I see a tag that's on crit and there's like really weak, then obviously I'd 100% go for them. Go for them first. So I like how you're going out to your team. I love how you're actively looking to try and get a pick on the soldier. Here, because uh, I think the Sombra started attacking you. Yeah. Here, once again, is this looking round, right? If you can't get up peeking him like this then he 
there's no way you're going to get it right. So now you need to think of another way you can either help your team or get up there, right? You need to be looking around and find your options here. Here's an option. You can go up here and sure, Parker's Widow isn't great, but you can stay with her for a second because the Sombra's coming out. Um, and obviously protecting this high ground, right? And then you can wait for your soldier to peek you and then you can fly across. Or you can super jump it up and kind of just hover about here-ish and then try and get a sight line. Or I would have, you could have gone out of spawn and followed him round the back way. It, that would have only been if you were a little bit closer, but obviously at that point, he's kind of very much on the higher ground. So I would look for different options here. Either stick it out and kind of push forward with the Orissa and wait till, for an opportunity to get up with your soldier, or have gone to your widow. Um, I'll go back onto you now. Because he, you're kind of still looking for the option. It's not really there. And you're not looking backwards again for your soldier. I like how you go up there, but it's a bit too late because... You saw that a soldier's dropping off. If you see a DPS run away from something, it means they ain't going to survive that damage and they're running. Um, so I think definitely he, like, I understand he wanted to get back up to the high ground, but in all honesty, it was kind of very much a bit too late and you should have played, kind of seen that he was dropping off. You can cancel your GA and drop down the side of that building instead. Uh, it, it was lucky that you're, t well not lucky, but like your bat had a really good window. Um, and we visor her as well. I like how you go in as well and kind of just go straight away trying to look for that damage boost on that visor. Um, I like how you leave the healing as well for your bat. Um, he letting your bat do the healing I think was a great thing to do at that point in time. And this is the back option that I meant earlier, which I think you did a great job of doing there. You That's what you should have done originally instead of waiting for your widow in spawn. Obviously, I don't think you knew that the widow, the Ash was going to switch back because she kind of, she was on widow, she switched to Ash and then switched back to widow. Um, but that's what I meant by the back option. It's a much safer way to get up here and you would have supported your soldier a lot better. Um, so uh, once again here, you kind of want to push, press forward with your soldier. I like this here. And I like how you're kind of looking back at your team there. That's something that I really want to do. Here we say, so kind of just being stood out in the open like you were. Like, stand how you are, like, right now. Like, kind of stand in this building. Obviously, keep turning your back to make sure that nobody's going to flank you from behind. But definitely, if you're parking someone on this high ground, use these two doors to your advantage. Because um, if people come up like the Ash, it means that you can't get shot, basically. Or say if they had a Widow, she can't grab up and shoot you. I like how you go to the shield here. Once again, I would have cancelled my GA and tried going to the side. I love this. I love how you play across the side and use the prop jump and then use the shield to your advantage. I think that was a really smart idea. Obviously, you get halted there. It's all right. You get booped down, but I love how you use your angelic descent to stay up. I like this valve, but once again, you're not looking around to kind of use it with the team. I wouldn't have Valk here personally just to pocket him. Instead, I would have used the Valk to look around. Maybe help these guys. Obviously, I think the Hog's kind of in there by himself at this point, unless if you specifically kind of angled yourself so you could get hold of him. But even then, I don't think you, you would have been able to. Widow's fine. But personally, I would have kind of saved the Valk here, uh, maybe for a few more seconds or something, to help with the team. Because right now, you're kind of just using it just to pocket your soldier, which you can easily do. I just stand in these cute little corridors here. So yeah, um, I'll carry on. And now you can, you kind of like, I, I think that's the point where I said to you, oh, go and, go and check on your team as well. And then you kind of just abandon the soldier. Be really, really careful if you're gonna leave your pocket target. If you're in voice chat, make sure you kind of tell them, be like, oh, I'm gonna leave you now. I, or I need to go and help this person. Or if you're not in VC, kind of just make sure that you're kind of, you know, predicting it as much as you can. I like how you go back to your bat here. This is a really smart play. Get your bat that extra ult charge because you got set on fire. Really, really good decision making there. I really like that. That was really smart. Because it gives your bat ult charge and it's just a great thing to get used to. You stood out very in the open here because if the snipers did end up coming onto this high ground, like where the Sombra is right now, Easy pick off. 
once again, you want to be playing this wall. Sure, they might come through this door. It's fine. Just come come around here. You know? You just need to kind of be aware where the other team are playing because right now you're in a you're playing in a very vulnerable position here and you either want to be playing this wall here or you want to be playing here. You don't want to be playing right in the middle. You kind of just want to use that bridge as like a passing place, basically. I'll just use this Bob. I like, I like that you're going with your soldier there. That's a really good commitment to that soldier and it pays off. I, I, right, you notice there's a Sombra there. I feel as though that you did notice that, but then you didn't help your bat. Sure, I understand. Needs pocket soldier, needs pocket soldier. But I'm pretty sure you spotted the Sombra that was here, right? What you needed to do there was turn around and help your bat. Because I don't know whether it would have saved him or not, but you should have helped your bat. Because hopefully then your soldier would have turned around and be like, oh, what's going on? And then realise the bat's getting attacked, right? Because you kind of just let the Sombra get that kill for free there because you were very focused on just damage boosting your soldier. I think I, then I would have turned around, maybe helped the bat because you kind of just walked past him and let him die, basically. There's, there's no excuse just to stick a heal beam on in there when he's just there, basically. Here, um, just kind of... You need to play the cover of the car or like back here a little bit more. Because um, basically if you didn't know, if you're peeking a wall or something, you have like 1.3, 1.4 seconds to um, like be able to like use your beam until it disconnects. You stayed up there a little bit too long because once again you saw that the Widow came down. Why is that? Oh, because they've got a Widow here. And sure, your wrist is pressing it, but, you know, you have to remember, if your DPS is backing off from something, it's for, it's for a reason, and you should probably back off as well. Um, I would say I understand here that you're here to help your Widow, and then I think you go straight back to kind of helping your soldier. Yeah, you, you try to get up there, and obviously, probably didn't about that, that's a headshot. So once again, can't, can't out heal with headshot. I like how you're going straight in with this visor. Keep going with that visor. Here, I would have done like you did before, where you're fully committed with the soldier. If the soldier's got a visor up and you're damage boosting it, it's a very easy way to kind of get it. Even if you're... Because you can reach people's beams. If you're just kind of using this high ground, I would have fully committed with the soldier here with a damage boost, as you maybe could have got a kill off here. Obviously, now everyone's turned round. It kind of means that there's a lot less people on this team fight. And it would have just put this focus onto you and him and would have given him a, a better like chance of staying alive. I like how you kind of get the idea now. Nothing really you can do there because obviously you expect the team to go into the point. Uh, but definitely I would have fought earlier to just go fully committed. I like this kind of flank with your soldier. But I like how you're looking round back to your hog to see if he's okay. Nice. And now I kind of just would play back a little bit. Yeah, you just kind of play a bit further back here. You stood quite close. Um, you can play kind of back here-ish, I think, with your beam about here. Just once again, it kind of means that you're not going to be taking a lot of that extra damage. And just kind of practice playing um, like at a max beam range, like kind of here. No one can hide from that's a really good pick though. You can't really do from that widow there. Once again, just fully commit with your soldier. I I love that damage boost on that hog there. That was a I love that damage boost. Even though it wasn't obviously because your soldier's up there, it was a very good damage boost on him. Just to try and get rid of that soldier. Once again, I love that peel for your hog. I think that was a really smart peel. And you're using kind of a very far back position, which I think is great. I would have fully gone in with your soldier here because there's like a little dip bit um, over here. You like you could play in this room here or you could play over here. Because once again, your soldier wants to go and commit, right? And if your soldier wants to commit to something, you're best following him because it just means he can survive a lot better. 
You kind of catch on to that there, but you're a little bit late, which is why you take a lot of damage. Here, I would have looked to do a slingshot straight out of this room because your soldier's looking back. You know the damage came from behind and you don't want to get yourself picked off. I, I love that slingshot though to get into that cover. And I like how you're still here because he can get some really good like spawn kills from here. You kind of want to play into that cover a little bit more. I don't really understand this Valk, especially with they've got a Sombra and they can touch. But it's okay. I like how you leave your soldier here because with everyone have already entered, this is probably one of your chances I'd say leave your soldier. With everyone have already entered, I think it's a very smart move to leave your soldier here. Because obviously he'll want to kind of just shoot these two. Your Moira's I think your Moira's just coalescing to get in there. So and he's kind of staying to stay in rather than to stay for the points. And I think this is a really good decision by you to come back to the team. The other problem is I think I, I, I like how you use the health pack. And you kind of use the whole hog to your advantage to go over for the health pack. I don't think there's really anything else you could have done there. Because everyone kind of just died already. Unless if you like fully backed off with your hog. I don't think there's really anything you could have done there. I think you're backing off with your hog would have been the only way you could have really survived there. But other than that, I fully understand why you would have taken that decision not to. And I think you end up losing the match, yeah. So overall, like, there were some really, really good, like, like, mercy plays. There was some really good, like, decision making and stuff like that. My key takeaways, I'm just going to go into the practice range just to show um, what I mean. The main things, I think, are very much decision-making and knowing what to do, like, decision-wise. And also, you see, I am constantly, like, moving about like this. I have my sense on, like, 100-100. It's not the fastest because my advanced settings aren't very quick, but it means that I can get out my pistol a lot. But also, it just means that I'm, like, constantly just moving about like this, looking at, say, for instance, I'm in a team fight here. I want to be looking up at this person, say, I'm pocketing them. Make sure they're alright, but also still kind of checking that my team's alright and everything, just, you know. Uh, and then obviously there was decision making, which I mentioned before. Kind of thinking about what the enemy team has, thinking about what your role is within the team, which I said a bit with the brig as well. It's the same applies with the mercy. You've got to really think about what your role is within the team and everything. Um, but if I covered any, everything there, if anyone has any questions, please let me know. There's kind of like my second time of watching it and I didn't really look over and make any notes so there might be some things that I may have said wrong there might be certain things you might disagree with at the same time once again it's just my personal opinion on what I would have done and what I would have done to help the plays um thank you so much for watching I, I have a few more kind of um over like kind of just clips from my stream and stuff they're up like full length matches kind of thing if you want to kind of see me with, with like some of my main account matches and stuff that I've been doing on stream. You guys can see that on the channel. I also have my TikTok account. That's the place that I post the majority of my content. I post the daily, which is usually educational music content. I usually take clips that are usually like about 30 seconds to a minute to a minute and a half long, depending on how long. And I'm also currently doing a series there of how I talk from how I went to Silver to GM on console Overwatch in about a year and a half-ish or so. Um, but yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you found this educational. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys too much. And if anyone has any questions, just let me know. And yeah, thank you for watching.